it is a very unique place. It is such a magical, amazing place. All of it would be irreplaceable. June 29th today, we are sitting in a swamp and I have no bug spray on and I have not gotten bitten by a mosquito yet. So it's one of these things, you can have mosquitoes in wetlands, but in this ecosystem, we're really surprised there's just not a lot of mosquitoes. And we think it's because it's a very healthy ecosystem and it has a lot of these animals, the diving predator beetles, the dragonfly nymphs, the frogs, tadpoles that are eating all of the, um, the mosquitoes and various other larvae. The... Everything is interconnected here. It's a pristine habitat. It's a black water cypress gum habitat with a lot of species. You would find them more in the coastal plain than you would here. It is the westernmost and northernmost example of a natural black water cypress gum swamp. There are lots of animal species here. The birds are amazing. The protonotary warblers are very prolific in the swamp. They're bright yellow warbler birds. And the reason why they're called protonotary is because the in the Catholic religion, the cardinals wear the red robes and the protonotaries wore golden robes. And that's why this bird is called protonotary because it is like, it's, it does, it looks like a golden, golden robe that this bird's wearing. So we have numerous wood duck boxes and prothonotary warbler nest boxes throughout the preserve. And the wood duck boxes are big wooden boxes that you'll see on posts throughout the preserve. And every single wood duck box gets used um, by wood ducks. We had one box last year that was used by a merganser, which was really cool. And we also have uh, prothonotary warblers using a variety of boxes. We actually have wooden smaller boxes in the preserve and then we also have these plastic containers that are actually Metamucil cans. <laughs> All of these boxes were put up by Dr. Eugene Hester who uh, did a lot of research on this site back when it was owned privately. He tried many different nest box materials for the prothonotaries and he found that the Metamucil cans, they just love to use them. Every single Metamucil can that is up is used by a prothonotary. And what's wonderful is when you're in a kayak too, that the prothonotary warblers are not as scared of you. Um, birds tend to think that predators have legs and they walk. And so when you're sitting in a kayak, they're just kind of curious. Who is this? <laughs> what is this creature? And since this is their habitat and you're in the middle of their forest, they tend to come a little bit closer so you can see them, which is really nice. We also have a heron rookery in the preserve, and these are really scraggly looking stick nests high up in the tree. The great blue herons, they're big birds. They do not fly through the forest, so they fly up above the cypress, drop into their nests, which are really high up, so you have to look really high up to the tip tops of the tree. They start nesting in February. You'll start seeing them coming back and gathering and freshening up their nests. And then they have the babies, and the babies are really loud, and you can hear them throughout the preserve. They go pop, 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 pop. They just make really loud noises. And then the parents come in with fish with their pterodactyl sound that's like brah, brah, which is great. So you hear all of that, which is amazing when you're in the swamp to hear these crazy sounds. And um, you can see the nests a little bit from there. Now when the leaves are off of the trees, that's the other thing interesting about cypress is that they lose their leaves. And so you look up and you think they're needles, but it is actually, they're deciduous. And so in the wintertime, you can really see the rookery. We have three beaver lodges on the pond. The beavers are great in this habitat. If you look around on the trees, you can see where the beavers have nibbled. Um, on the trees, you can see teeth marks and, and evidence of the beavers, which is really neat. There's also a lot of insects and macroinvertebrates and dragonflies that live in this preserve that help keep it pristine. Fishing is another great activity to do here. Um, I have seen many visitors who have rigged out their kayaks for fishing. You can catch uh, bluegills, uh, 
pumpkin seed. There's a lot of uh, flyers in here, which are really unique. That's kind of a coastal plain fish. There's lots of different fish here. So the fishing is really good. I have heard from the fishermen, you have to kind of know how to fish in this swamp area. It's a little bit different than fishing in other places, but once you get it, it's a really fun activity. And the best way to help is like our Facebook page because I sometimes post things on the Facebook page of things that the preserve needs. So, for example, we would love to have more wood duck boxes. We would love to have more bluebird boxes. We only have a few up right now and they're all being used. So we definitely have room and space to put up more boxes. And then you can also save Metamucil containers or something like Metamucil containers. And sometimes we'll post other ideas for volunteer activities. You can volunteer to help pull some of the fishing line out. I often tell visitors if you see some caught up somewhere, please just pull it out so that no animal you know, tries to ingest it. This is just an amazing, beautiful place to get out into nature. So many studies have shown just spending a little time in green space, outdoors in nature, can reduce your blood pressure, improves your health, your quality of life. Um, all of these things are great values for people.